I think I've told the story in the podcast before, but the dumbest thing I ever did was um, I, um, I yeah, I used to have a, a standard transmission, a little manual uh, pickup truck, and uh, a friend of mine came over to visit me from out of town, and uh, we stayed up late, and then we, the next morning we were going to go to Houston to visit another friend, and uh, I woke up the next morning, I was really tired, really hungover, and I asked my friend who was visiting, like, hey, can you drive a standard? He said, oh, sorry, I can't. So I started driving from Austin to Houston, then partway down the road, I'm like, are you sure you can't drive a standard? Because I'm going to fall asleep here. He's like, I can't. I said, I'll tell you what. Once we get going on the highway, once we're on 71, I'm just going to close my eyes. Like, I'll just keep my foot on the accelerator. You just reach over and, and steer, and we'll be fine. He was like, yeah, sure, whatever. I put my head down, start sleeping. God. And then I think, I should check on this. And I open my eyes, and I look at him, and he's asleep. Also, <laughs> with his hand just reached over on the wheel. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> But I'm course, the responsible one here. <laughs> like, I'm doing my job. I'm doing what we agreed on. Uh, and of course, that only like that only woke me up for like three minutes. <laughs> and of course, I'm like, oh, I'm really sleepy again. <laughs> You're essentially a cement block on an accelerator pedal. Is what you were. You're like, yeah. 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 Luckily, the the highway was very straight at that stretch. I, I can't believe I'm not dead. Like that. that there's almost no scenario where that story ends well. Yeah. How'd you make it through that trip? What did you, did you stop and like? take a rest or did you get some water like how did you make did you drive all the way i just drove i just yeah Jesus start Christ. slapping myself yeah, yeah slapping I, I pulled chest hair when i had when i have it I'm pulled shaved chest right now. hair oh yeah that wakes me right up yeah you get little strange little patches you're like nose oh, hair? i was really tired you so. little nose hair no yeah it hurts oh. it'll wake you up yeah no, no, good. i've done that actually nose hair because you want them out anyway just turn the ac up all the way so it's freezing <laughs> and then you have to stay awake that doesn't I'm, do it for me my truck didn't have ac <laughs> like oh. my truck had no ac no radio no nothing so it was like a blanket the air was like blankets yeah, yeah. Was like, uh. um so i'm gonna go on a tangent here you mentioned one of you mentioned plucking nose hairs yeah uh, i've got a guilty admission to make um i the other week i got a nose hair trimmer oh because i was like oh, you know i got some nose hairs that come out and they look kind of gross i was like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna be good about this i'm gonna trim my nose hairs so i'd never used one before so it's like a little looks like a little nub right like a little circle and it's got like something worrying in it and you like stick it in your nose and it trims the hair and i don't it's like i don't know like how far you stick it in or what's so like, right. so like i'll just you stick it in as far as you can stick it right so i'm like in there like working the nostrils and then i'm like oh wow you know all this hair came out like it looks good and i'm like Oh, now all the hair's short and it's stabbing the inside <laughs> of my nostrils. So it's like for the next week, I just kept squeezing my nose because it, it was just so <laughs> uncomfortable and it hurt because it was like all these tiny little coarse daggers stabbing the inside of my nose. That could be dangerous shoving that thing up your nose. Like I felt like total recall. You're, you're like <laughs> all of a sudden you start <laughs> you start hearing violins and stuff. And you're like, what am I touching up there in my brain? Yeah, I yeah I my I had a, a full set and it comes with like a, a nose trimmer. A small trimmer and then a big trimmer. And I use a small trimmer for like my neck and my face, and then the big ones for my balls. Obviously, you can't have them be the both the same one. I thought you were gonna say you stuck it up your butt. No, why? Just why? You know, people have hairy buttholes, and you get rid of the dingleberries. No, you, no, you don't. You're saying stick it up your butt. <laughs> well, I mean, just there's like, no hair in your it's ass. Totally different. It's so around like in that region. There's hair. Right. And it does cling to poo. You're talking about dingleberries. Dingleberries. Do you uh, take care of that? Yeah, I, it's, I, I have my You're asking the man who waxes his chest. I feel like the the and normally the butt's a whole other, a whole other story. You, you gotta spread, and then you gotta. Are we getting into shaving and waxing asses again? Yes. All right. How do you take care of it? Huh? What? You know, my ass? No, just the downstairs mix up. Well, I have different methods. Some, there's the burning method. You just <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. Trimming. Uh, Agent no. Orange. Yeah, Agent Orange. You know, I just go like. I don't even know what I'm going with here, but, uh, you know, like, you know, basic trimming, but the thing is, is I have two, uh, electric razors that look exactly alike, mm. and so, I, I'm always playing, like, let's, I guess it wouldn't be Russian roulette, but, you know, I'm like, which one was it, and there's only one way to tell which one it was, and Smell. I, yeah, and I'm not gonna do it, so I just go, uh, I'll wait another week, and I'll figure <laughs> it out, but, you Dangerous know. game you play. Yeah. I, my, I, one time I went to a friend's house, and I was like, oh man, I forgot to shave, cause, and he was like, oh, I got an extra razor. I was like, oh, cool, cool. And I'm like shaving. He's like, you know, that's my ball razor. Oh, my God. <laughs> Our like, friends are assholes. <laughs> it's like rusted and covered in hair. <laughs> that's my special like, razor. Same thing has happened to me before. Yeah. So when you, um, I mean, I'm curious because I don't think I've ever talked to any, any, any dude who takes care of his butt hair. Um, <laughs> doesn't it get really itchy? When it grows back in, or do you just like always maintain it to the point where it never get reaches that stage? No, nah, it'll get itchy after a certain point, but I prefer itchy than tangled. 
Because mm. if it gets, yeah, if you're like running, especially like very active, you know, like it all gets, yeah. Yeah, if it gets tangled, it pulls, and you don't know what the pull is from. You're like, what is that? Is that that what? STD? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I took care of that. No, but you feel this weird tug, and you're like, bah! where is that? And then you're like, oh, yeah. I have to keep my belly churned because, like, sometimes belly hair will get co- hooked on belt buckles, mm. and I'll just, like, that is pain beyond belief. But that, that one I can relate to. That happens for me. What color is your belly button wet? Is it typically a, 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 a it's sort of a gray, sometimes a light blue? Is I it, just I just took I mean, a shower. I imagine it's so. just whatever, whatever. Mine's color always clothing. Always wear. dark blue. Yeah, yeah you it, wear a lot of blue shirts. Yeah, yeah, mine's always gray or dark blue. Also, like I feel like there's no variation. Like I'm wearing a red shirt right now, but I, there's never like a, oh a, look, well, there's red lint. Be an ex- experiment to wear only red shirts or a yellow shirt or something like that, to where it's like, how did we get to this color? We were uh, in L.A. this past weekend, so we went to the beach. We're sitting there uh, on the beach, and we're like, "Oh my god!" Up, we we saw that there was a, a baby seal uh, that swam up to the beach, and we're like, "Oh my god! Look, there's a seal like coming right up to the beach." And it's like seals, like you know, we see its head coming, and like all you know, children start running to it. It's like, "Oh my god! The seal is so friendly!" And like, "Oh, this is amazing!" So we're like, "We gotta go check out the seal." We walk up; it's a dead seal. <laughs> floating in- Water it's, on the kids start crying. Its eyes were like rolling the back of its head, and it's like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and uh, it was rolling around in the tide for a little while, and and people, so it kept, yeah, it yeah. kept it would wash back, and then it would come back, and people <laughs> run up to it again. <laughs> oh my god, a seal! <laughs> eventually, it rolled back into the water, and it starts going down the beach, and we were just like watching it go down the water and seeing the little thing. And uh, anyway, I was like, man, someone's gonna swim up to it and like be freaked out. <laughs> Then we see this guy going out and charging. He was sitting with his girlfriend on this beach towel, and he starts walking into the water, and he swims to the seal. And we're like, what in the hell is he doing? He grabs the seal by the tail and drags it up onto the beach to his girlfriend <laughs> and puts it down on the sand. And the seal is like, I mean, it's huge. It's, you know, bigger than this coffee table, obviously. And the girlfriend's like, what the hell? And then more people start gathering around it. And the guy's just sitting sitting back on the blanket with his girlfriend. Look what I got. Seal. I'm like, <laughs> I got this for you, babe. And she, oh, man, it was awful. Why, why would he do that? I don't, I, I don't know. know. I don't know why he did it. I think that he was showing the lifeguard. He was like, hey, you need to get rid of this <laughs> seal or whatever. But he could have just let it yeah. drift, you know, back out or lifeguards, whatever. Lifeguards, the garbage men of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> and the, I mean, we saw the lifeguard. The lifeguard looked at him and was just like, I don't fucking know what to do. <laughs> like it's like that's not a person. I can't save it. Yeah, yeah. it's already it's dead, dead too. <laughs> like oh, I can't do anything with this. One time I was it's heartbreaking. In, I was in the Seattle airport, and uh, I think we were flying back from a PAX, and uh, I want to say I think it was someone was there with someone. It might have been Jeff. Jeff and I were there at the airport, and uh, we're taking the red eye back from Seattle. So it's like nine p.m. or something, and we're waiting to get on. We're we're checking into our flight, and there's like a group of like six like kind of douchey frat dudes who are also like checking in for a flight. They're not checking in the same flight, they're checking in some other flight. And um, like one of them's like taking the lead. You can tell like he's the guy who organized everything and he's trying to help everyone get checked in. Alpha. Uh, yeah. And uh, so he's up there and like the, the person behind the counter is like typing like crazy. She's like, I don't know what's going on. Type, type, type. He's like, let me look at your reservation, sir. Type, type, type. She's like, oh, your flights were yesterday. Oh. <laughs> and then one of the other dudes like takes his backwards baseball cap and he's like, "What the fuck?" And he's like, slams it on the ground. He's like, "You fucked us!" <laughs> he's like, "We missed our flight!" And he just starts screaming at his friend. I like the little detail. His backward baseball yeah, cap. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, he did the thing where he's like, he smushed it up and then got it in one hand and just slammed it on the ground. That's fucking awesome, man. Chris and I were when we're flying back from L.A. Uh, on Sunday. Not to keep going on airports, but uh, airport no, airport stuff, stories but, are like half of this podcast. I know, but we we uh, we're coming back from L.A. and it's uh, me, Chris, and Josh Flanagan. We and came from the beach. Like, we come straight from the beach. Like we, were, the we almost missed our flight because <laughs> yeah. we were at the beach. From, yeah, one with the Dead Seal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, so uh, I'm like wearing a. We're all wearing swimsuits. We're wet and covered in sand <laughs> still. To, to be clear, anyway, Chris is up ahead uh, of us in line because Josh and I, had, you know, had been doing you know a little late. So he's up ahead, and we see him give his ID to the to the TSA agent. And immediately she looks at it, and this like little red thing flashes, and she's like, "We gotta, we gotta go to the side here. We gotta go to a different area." And Josh and I start laughing our asses off, you know, as he gets like, you know, flagged for you know whatever additional screening. And so you know we're uh, getting our way through line, Josh and I, 
and we look over at Chris and he's getting the full work over as far as like they're digging through his bag and all this stuff, you know, uh, far off and we can't hear them or anything. We see the TSA agent. The TSA agent says something to Chris. Chris kind of looks at him like that and does this to the table. He goes... <laughs> and the TS, the Just TSA agent over. goes, no, 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 don't turn around, put him out like that. And Josh and I are laughing our asses off. We are, we are laughing so hard. And 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 Chris is seeing us, you know, far off, and he's like, you know, shaking his head like that. And other people around us are laughing. And so I get up to the little scanner machine, and I go through the scanner. And I'm still looking at Chris and laughing because he's still getting, you know, searched and stuff. And I get out of the scanner, and, and I'm looking at him, and this guy uh, runs this little thing across me, and it goes, eh, eh, eh. and I'm still laughing. He goes, sir, we need to go to the side <laughs> over here. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, uh, bring your stuff over here. So he runs this like little pad uh, over me and puts it in this machine, and it brings up like some you know red mm -hmm. deal or whatever. He's like, I'm going to have to swab your entire bag. And I look over at Chris. He's like 10 feet from me getting searched <laughs> through all of his stuff. And we're still wet. We're covered in sand. And... And so he, you know, he starts going across my hands. He's like, what, what is this material on your hands, sir? I'm like, it's sand. I came from the beach straight here. And he's like, did you do anything else at the beach besides swim? I'm like, play with dead seals. Yeah, I was like, I guess I was playing with the seals. But, you know. <laughs> and uh, so he runs through the machine again. He's like, sir, we're going to have to go to a private room. Is, uh, oh, God. is that okay? I'm like what and chris just looks at me he's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so i get led past chris into this room and i hear josh laughing outside the room and chris <laughs> laughing and we're like causing a scene because we're all together and we all look like bums and so i'm in this little room and i didn't tell you this but whenever tsa like really gives you the pat down they call it out you know whatever they're doing and it doesn't like it doesn't help the situation at all he's like Sir, I'm going to turn my palms around and run it down your chest like this. <laughs> and it goes like that. And I'm like, okay, okay well, that, was, that wasn't so bad. And he's like, sir, I'm going to take my hand like this and run it between your legs like that. And he starts, you know, doing this stuff. And I'm like, this is like, you know, credit or debit, man. You know? <laughs> and, and he just, he does all this stuff. And he's like, okay, you and your friend were at the beach. And I was like, yes, we're at the beach. He's like, okay, you can go. I'm like, fuck me. And I walk out and Chris was just getting you know, unsearched, I guess, but it was, yeah. uh, I mean, we were wearing swimming trunks. What are you going <laughs> to do? Sandals. And sandals. Like, where are you going to hide anything? What also, you... look at that face. Like, what is he going to do? Look at this punum here. Just, I, that's... I, <laughs> I know a sexier face, though. Oh, yeah. Lips face. Boom. Oh! oh there we go. Call back. <laughs> Joanne, I'll call you Joanne from now on. <laughs> <laughs> or mom. Uh, whatever you want. Don't call me Junior Junior. We're yeah. talking about late and showing up tardy or, you know, miss schedules and stuff like that. I got invited to a surprise party uh, for some girl's friends, and I didn't know who they were, so I was like, whatever, you know, just give me the time. And uh, I start driving over, I show up, house looks kind of dark, I start walking up to it and about to knock on the door, and I'm like, hey, where are you? Like, no one seems to be here. And she's like, the party's not till next week. And I was like, <laughs> in the middle of this yard, I was like, fuck me, <laughs> fuck. And then I like got back to my car. It'd be great you're in the kitchen of the house. You're like, where's the party, man? I didn't realize I could have ruined this guy's surprise birthday party. Like, wow. for a party, you feel like normally you just walk in, right? There's no need to knock. Like, what if you had just tried yeah. the door and gotten in there? Hey, where is everyone? <laughs> surprise? Z Zane here, yeah. ready to party. Would have been a I already, surprise. I already drank all the beer in the fridge. Where's the cooler? <laughs> um, here, let me, let me read this. Um, and then the next year, for some reason at school, we took a school trip to Disney World. Wow. When I was, I think I was 14 or 15. And I'd already, like, I feel like I'd already just seen it. And, like, you're at that weird age where you're a teenager and you don't. I've been there Yeah, already. I've been there. Like, I'm not into that. I don't want to do it. And so we, you know, we, as part of the school trip, we go out there to Florida. And we're staying at some hotel. And the hotel has an arcade. And in the arcade, they've got, like, Mortal Kombat. I'm like, oh, sweet, it's Mortal Kombat here. So, like, I'm, I'm playing Mortal Kombat, and then they're like, all right, we have to go to Disney. I'm like, fuck, I don't want to go to Disney. I just want to <laughs> play Mortal Kombat all day. So we, <clears throat> we all get in the bus, and we go to Disney, and they let us loose. And, you know, they're like, all right, if anybody gets sick or if anybody, you know, feels bad, just go to, like, Town Hall and, you know, leave a note, leave a message, and let us know, and we'll find you, and we'll know. And if there's an emergency, just go there. I'm like, all right, cool. So, you know, we're walking around Disney. I spent like an hour in the park. I'm like, I'm done with this. I just want to go play Mortal Kombat. So, I'm like, I'm just going to tell them I was sick. So, I go to like the town hall or whatever, and I'm like, I just leave a note. And I'm like, um, I got sick. I can't do this. I'm going back to the hotel. Carry on without me. <laughs> yeah, on Sorry. Without me. I'll, I'll be okay. So, I go back to the hotel. I'm like, yeah, Mortal Kombat. I played Mortal Kombat all day. 
Then like at nine o'clock at night, one of my teachers comes in and is like, you <laughs> <laughs> get over here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, and he was just like yelling at me because I left the park and they couldn't find me. I'm like, I left a message. I did what you said. He's like, you know, why'd you leave the park? You know, we, we waited there for two hours and the park <laughs> looking for you. I was like, I did exactly what you said. I left a message. He's like, you you don't look sick. Like, yeah, I came back. I took my medicine. I'm fine now. <laughs> <laughs> so they couldn't get mad at me because I followed their rules. But I wasted everybody's time on that trip. <laughs> That's a perfect vacation for you. <laughs> I can't think of something better for you. <laughs> It's awful. I still I, I feel terrible about it to this day. Now you think about it every day, and you're like, that was the best. I was so <laughs> on that time. I went the one one time I went to Disney World. Uh, like we went, and um, all the adults were paired up with a kid. You know. Yeah. I got paired up with my great grandmother. Oh, who like right now is like a hundred. Oh, the sassy one, the newspaper writer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's like a hundred. So then she was like eighty-seven or something. Or I don't know. A young old. woman. Yes. Uh, but we're like, I just remember we were doing like bumper cars <laughs> and I, she was sitting with me and she'd get mad at me if I hit anyone <laughs> and she'd get mad at the people who hit us. I remember like driving and then she turned around and yell, Hey, that is not nice. And I'm like, but the bumper car, that's what you're supposed to do. And like all the kids are like, like, like scared because she's like, oh, yeah. I was like, what are we? She's like, you drive around nicely. I'm like, all right. Your grandma's like <laughs> driving slow in the fast lane of the bumper cars, and she's just like, always indicate. <laughs> it's like the one time ever in like bumper car history, like everyone just drove in a circle. Yeah. And <laughs> it's the one time ever where old people don't hit into other people, other cars. Well, it's comforting to know that they realize that it's wrong, and they shouldn't be doing it at least. They're like, this isn't the highway, we shouldn't be hitting other cars. <laughs> this isn't a parking lot. Yeah, this isn't a parking lot. Uh, yeah. Wow. yeah, I... I always worry about that, about, like, getting older and not realizing you make that turn and that you can't drive anymore <laughs> or that you can't see as well as you think you can. Because, like, I feel like all of that... It's gradual. Right. It's super right. gradual. It's not like a, bam, you shouldn't be doing this anymore. It's just like, yeah, maybe not, maybe not, then definitely not. You, you read about that kid who, uh, he's driving with his grandma or his great-grandma and she had a minor heart attack behind the wheel. Uh, while they're on the highway, and so he steered them into a ditch and slowed the car down. The kid's like nine or something like that, Fuck. and he he you know he basically steered the car and it slowed down. Her foot fell off the gas or whatever and stuff like that, and came to a stop. <laughs> and he said that he learned how to do it from Mario Kart. <laughs> He's like, that's where I knew how to do this and whatever. And and yeah, so she's like having a heart attack. She's like, I'm just gonna lean back. Yeah, I'm just keep <laughs> my foot on the pedal. Steer, just... and I'll shift later. <laughs> Don't hit any other cars. Um, yeah, that's... Yeah, no. When, when do you know that you're too old to... It got to the point where my granddad was getting so old that uh, we had to take his keys away from him because we weren't driving mm -hmm. anymore. And this dude's like a World War II veteran. He didn't put up with shit. So he remember, like, I remember him fighting with my uncle uh, Fred. He was like the oldest of the brothers. And uh, he'd taken his keys. He's like, come on, just, just give me the keys, Fred. Come on. And he's like, no, no, Dad. You, you know, you can't drive. He's... It, this is like, I don't know, back in the 90s or something. He's like, just just go ahead and fax them to me. <laughs> you don't understand how fax machines work. <laughs> fax, <laughs> fax me the keys, goddammit. I want to drive. You should have faxed the keys. And it comes out and it's like, what? Uh, I made a wrong choice. Man. Oh. When I was in uh, in college, one of the guys in uh, in my college was, was like that. You know, he loved picking locks. It must be like, there must be some people who are just really into that. And yeah. He was, you know, he always carried like a lock pick set with him, mm -hmm. and he always wore a black trench coat and like a fedora. Jesus, what? <laughs> and uh, we, uh, I mean, this was down in Houston. This was back when Astro World and Waterworld were still open, and uh, like my college had rented out Waterworld for the night one night. It's like, all right, we're gonna go and you know, for like four hours or whatever. Waterworld is just for you guys. Is Kevin Costner there? <laughs> and, uh, no, he was not. Uh... And that dude went with us. And everyone else is wearing, you know, swim trunks and stuff to get wet. He showed up in that <laughs> and that fedora with his set of lock picks, and like, so everyone's going into the front door, and then as we're going in, like, security's like, "You, stop!" <laughs> and they've got like a piece of paper, and this is his face on the paper, like, "You can't come in here." He'd been kicked out of Astro World so many times for picking locks and getting access to places he shouldn't be that they had a piece of paper with his face, holy, <laughs> to shit. make sure he didn't get in. It's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> yeah, to be that level of like. 
you know. What do you get into it at when Ash World was around? It's still like the, the prizes. Well, I guess the prizes, but also like the little trees or the, or the secret employee little, access areas. Yeah, the access areas. I guess you could do that, but. But it sucks. It sucks at Astral World. I guess it's just the thrill. Yeah, I, I think he just. Yeah, it's something that you're forbidden from entering. Right. And it's just like I want to go in there and see. Yeah. I've never stolen. Like I don't steal. But we were having a shoot in college, um, at a uh, carnival or something like that. It was in Dripping Springs, I think. And uh, I was like packing down set, and I was pissed off because it wasn't even my shoot. But I was there, the last one there, breaking down set. And I had watched, like, fucking ten kids walk up to, like, a, a carnival game and then just take a prize. And I was like, those <laughs> things are, like, worth, what, five cents? And I was talking to a girl at the time. I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I just, like, took something? So I packed everything into my car. Look around. No one's there. Pitch black. They turn off all the lights. I take this stupid, despicable me, like, giant yellow ugly thing. And as soon as I grabbed it, there was, like, two people that were, like, 100 yards away. They're like... <gasps> you put that down. I was like, fuck, like, how did they catch me? So I immediately started running with it. And I was like, am I really going to get arrested over this goddamn Despicable Me thing? So I, like, threw it behind me, hopped over a fence, just started running. And then it was like, I was, like, in the born identity. I was, like, going through a crowd, like, oh, I'm going to get away. Just for a fucking Despicable Me stuffed animal. Wow. They're, like, shooting at you. <laughs> Go to the ground! Go to the ground! Sorry! The life of crime's not worth it, Blaine. Zane. Zane. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucked up. I'm the wrong name. Yeah. So, don't steal kids. Yeah. Yeah. 